Welcome to Encountering the Word, our weekly reflection on the Sunday Scriptures. God speaks to us through our own lives and experience, through the church, and importantly, through the words of Scripture. And so we gather to read and reflect on God's Word on this day of resurrection, what the Lord is saying to us here and now, and how best we can respond to what we hear. Let us pray as we gather to listen, reflect, and be together. Teach us to listen, O God, to those nearest to us, our family, our friends, and our co-workers. Teach us to listen, caring God, to those far from us, the whisper of the hopeless, the plea of the forgotten, the cry of the anguished. Teach us to listen, O God, our Mother, to ourselves. Help us to be less afraid and to trust the voice inside in the deepest part of ourselves. Teach us to listen, Holy Spirit, for your voice in busyness and in boredom, in certainty and in doubt, in noise and in silence. Teach us, Lord, to listen most especially to your words spoken to us through the scriptures. Teach us, dear Lord, to listen. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him and uncover the loins of kings, to open doors before him that gates may not be closed. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I clothe you, though you do not know me, that men may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Give the Lord glory and power. Give, Give the, the Lord, Lord glory and power. O oh, sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell among the nations his glory and his wonders among all the people. Give the Lord glory and power. For the Lord is great and highly to be praised, to be feared above all gods. For the gods of the nations are naught. It was the Lord who made the heavens. Give the Lord glory and power. Give the Lord, you families of peoples, give the Lord glory and power. Give the Lord the glory of his name. Bring an offering and enter his courts. Give the Lord glory and power. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. O tremble before him all the earth. Say to the nations, the Lord is king. He will judge the people in fairness. Give the Lord glory and power. The beginning of the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy. To the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for you all, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you, 
For our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. You will shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, the Pharisees went and took counsel how to entangle Jesus in his talk. And they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully and care for no man, for you do not regard the position of men. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why do you put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the money for the tax. And they brought him a coin. And Jesus said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God, the things that are God's. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, our Lord Jesus Christ. There's a famous scene in the film, The Life of Brian, in which the British comedy team, Monty Python, asks, what have the Romans ever given to us? The setting is a small resistance cell in the time of the Roman occupation of Palestine when the characters are trying to whip up their anti-Roman sentiment. One by one, the members of the cell mention things that the Romans have given. It turns out that they have built the aqueducts, provided sanitation, the roads, irrigation, medicine, education, and wine. They've given the public baths, and the streets are safe to walk in at night. The Romans are keeping order, and the Romans have brought peace. Ultimately, the resistance cell has to agree that the Romans haven't just been a one-way street of rape, pillage, and plunder, and that they might, to re might need to reevaluate what the Romans have done. Jesus lived in these times of struggle against the oppressive Roman occupation of Palestine, just like Israel is presently occupying Palestine in our decades. Jesus also had to make judgments about whether to pay taxes to the oppressor. And in today's gospel, his answer in regard to paying taxes was, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. As Jesus' followers, therefore, we are given a very clear instruction of our dual obligation, to comply with the state legislation which includes paying taxes, and to fulfill our religious duties. Or as St. Augustine said, we have to live in the city of man and the city of God. Some of us may respond that Jesus was not a very effective resistance figure. He said to cooperate with the Romans. And that's true, he wasn't a zealot, although he was very aware of the oppression of the occupying forces. And he didn't tell people to totally resist the Romans. In one quote, he even tells people to walk two miles if a soldier forces them to walk one mile with him. So this week I was stunned to see a very good friend of mine had a whole sheaf of e-toll invoices. 
I happened to look at the bottom line and I saw that he had thousands of rands in unpaid tolls. I was amazed and I spoke to him about it. He first laughed it off and then tried to justify himself by saying that the e-tolls are going to be scrapped soon and that the system is corrupt because some corrupt politician receives a kickback of at least 50 cents for each transaction. But he wasn't able to say which politician this is. What, me, what made me less impressed was that my friend, whom I admire very much, comes from a part of the country which has a reputation for not paying for water and electricity. I was beginning to see a pattern here. It's not that my friend is very poor and totally unable to afford the services he receives. He has a very nice flashy car, thank you very much. It's that there is a pattern of non-payment of basic services, toll roads, water, electricity. Do people think that they have the right to get away with whatever cannot be policed or enforced? People make Ill illegal connections to the electricity grid and when ESCOM removes these, they simply reconnect their houses and their businesses. What is worse is that when they, they then threaten with violence the ESCOM workers who are trying to ensure the safety and the stability of the grid and that the users pay for electricity. This is basically stealing. It's against the Eighth Commandment. People are sponging off the country of their fellow citizens who do pay their bills, where our democratically elected government has decided that some services, such as certain roads, will be paid for by the users and not come out of the national fiscus. Non-payment is a form of corruption on the level of the individual citizen, the man or the woman in the street. Nobody who does this has a right to complain about the rampant corruption of people higher up in government. They are saying, I'm happy to live with an ungovernable country because I will only pay when I am coerced or forced. I don't care about what is the right thing to do. They think they're being smart or beating the system. Other people are just being foolish for paying for the use of the most recently built, upgraded, or maintained roads. Or people pretend to justify their behavior with pseudo-political correctness. We are withholding funds from the corrupt state. Or these roads should be free for all the citizens to use. I remember in the 1980s when rent boycotts were a form of political resistance because people said they had already paid over and again for the value of their modest township houses. I took on the administration of our parish in Soweto in the, light, in the late 1980s, and I had to do a basic transaction with a municipality, which involved the transfer of a property into the portfolio of the diocese. We hit a logjam because the previous priest had refused to pay electricity for the years. The municipality would do nothing about the school playing field until the parish had paid off its accumulated debt. The parishioners then had to fork out something like 30,000 rand, which was a mountain of debt in those days. Fine, those were different times and different circumstances. That was a deliberate strategy devised by the Soweto Civic Association to make the townships ungovernable. And it had an eventual political aim. We're no longer in the 1980s. Now we have attained all the demands of access to central state power and democracy, and the slow road to social transformation is underway. And the state for which we voted is saying, pay for your services, or be prepared to have those hard fought for services disrupted. Nowadays, rather, we have individual citizens on their own initiative doing what they want, rendering the state-run services non-functional. 
Gone is the spirit of Ubuntu or solidarity that was so evident in the years of the struggle. What does not impress me is the way that some of these people encourage others to follow their lawless behavior. Jesus could have done all this just as well, but he said, render to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. Are we doing our duty as citizens? Let's pray together now as the Lord himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. Loving God, you are always calling us to new life. Grace us through your word, the word that we have heard and pondered, to know you more clearly, to love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly each and every day. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. May Almighty God Bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us, friends, for encountering the Word. We look forward to being with you again next week.